talk about definite integrals here. So I probably should specify that we're talking about definite. So let's go ahead and draw this into B. Now, let's talk about when definite integrals equal zero. What does that mean? Well, there are three cases in which the definite integral of a function equals zero. First off, let's talk about what that even means. So what is a definite integral? If you don't know what a definite integral is, it's probably a good idea for a more detailed explanation to go ahead and watch my video, Integrals Indefinite Versus Definite, to understand the basics between, or the basis, the, uh, the differences between definite and indefinite integration. But for these purposes, let's just do a little quick recap. A definite integral is an integral that takes a function over a certain interval uh, like a to b, right, and then you have a function inside, and it spits out a value of area. That's what a definite integral is, as opposed to an indefinite that takes a function and then spits out its antiderivative. No, no, no. Okay, let's, there's no need to write all that. So, uh, we're talking about definite integrals here. This is what is important. So, what do we need to do? What do we need to worry about? When does this equal zero? Well, what does that even mean? If a definite integral is something that takes a function over an interval and gives you area, which, what's that look like? That looks like this, right? A, B, how much area is in between A and B? That's all that's saying. So if that's what this does, then how can we have no area in between A and B. Well, let's think about a couple of things first. Let's not even think about the graph. Let's think about a real, a real world example uh, that's just, you know, elementary school kind of math. We have a barn or a building, and it's a, it's a you know, a, a polygon like this. It's, a, it's just a quadrilateral. There we go. Sorry. It's, it's a quadrilateral, and uh, we need to we need to construct a fence around this, okay? And so I'm telling you that this is uh, 20 feet long. This is 20 meters. Let's, let's go metric and make things the way they should be here. So this is 20 meters. This is, is 10 meters. And I'm going to give you 30 meters, or let's just, I'll give you 20 meters of fence, okay? So you have fence equal to 20 meters. And I want you to make a fence connected to this barn so that there is zero area inside the fence. All right, well, let's think about that. How can we do this? I mean, if we, if we went out and we did, we said, okay, 10 feet this way, and, uh, uh, you know, let's say we had like five feet this way, and five feet this way, and five feet this way, and we had five feet left over. There's still some area in between here, so we can't do that. This is not okay. So let's think about what we could do. Well, here's a really good idea. What if we make the fence go out for 10 meters, and then we go to the end, and we turn the fence right back around with, with no area in between, and we go 10 meters back this way, and you just have this line. There's no space in between my arms, right? So that's one way we could screw this up and make sure there's no area. So that's a, that's a great idea. Let's see. What else could we do? Well, what if we do this? What if we say 20 meters of fence, let's just make the fence exactly on the outside of the barn. This is also 20 meters. Well, there's no area there either. So let's translate these ideas onto a graph for our first two uh, conditions in which the definite integral is going to be equal to zero, okay? All right, so we have, we have a graph here, and we've got a function that we'll call f of x going along this graph. <coughs> And it's coming along, and then boom. Okay, we're going to hit the x-axis. And instead of passing back through, like would be really nice looking and would, it would go very well in flow, let's make this ugly. We, we go and, oh man, it's almost like it's asymptotic, but it's not. It's, it's zero the entire time. The value of this is truly zero for the entire way. And then, woo! And so here is point A, and here is point B. Well, how much area is in between the line of the x-axis in the line of this function, it's f of x. Well, the area is zero. So, if the indefinite integral is zero, this is one way that your function could look. Over a to b, the line is just equal to the bloody x-axis. That's all there is. So this is one way. Let's talk about another way. This is equivalent to 
barn fence. Just like that. You draw, you write your fence around the outside of the barn. Alright, so that's equivalent to that. Now let's talk about another way. <clears throat> what if we have a function and your function is doing this here? Okay, great. And this right here is point A, but A is equal to B. If A equals B, then point A is also point B. So how much area is right here? None. This is equivalent to making your fence like this, just a protrusion from the outside of the fence. So, that's another way that it can be zero. Now let's talk about a tricky way, all right? This is, this is really interesting, and this may mess with you a little bit, but this is really kind of fun. So, we have a graph. Let's say we have a graph that looks a little bit like sine x. That's a great example. Sine x, it is true for sine x, what I'm about to say, that you can have an, uh, a definite integral equal to zero over a certain interval on sine x. So we'll say this function is kind of like sine x equals f of x. Okay? And uh, so let's draw it. You know, uh, I'm not worried about being perfect on the you know, axis, so this is just kind of what it looks like. And here is point A, right here, and here is point B, and this is so not to scale, it's not even funny, but let's just understand what I'm talking about for the purposes of this. The area in between here is positive. The area in between here is negative. So we have, we have well, we'll just call it plus A plus minus a, positive area plus the negative area, when we add these two things together, we add these two integrals, well, positive plus negative, hmm, what's this mean? We're just getting zero. This cancels it out. The positive area here cancels out the negative area because the area a is equal to a. So if this is 6 on the inside, this is just saying 6 minus 6, which is just zero, right? It's obvious. So, this is another way that your definite integral can be equal to zero. So in a quick recap, definite integral takes a function over an interval, spits out a value that shows how much area is in between there. There are three ways that we talked about in which it can be equal to zero. A straight line on your function, negative area and uh, positive area canceling each other out, or just having your point A and B equal to one another, causing a straight line with no area in between. There you go, that's it.